these cases. Uh, during this time, feel free to post your questions in chat and we'll answer these during the Q&A portion at the end. And without further ado, I present Davin and John. Davin, if you'd like to kick us off. Thanks so much, V. I appreciate that. Uh, get a little bit of a chance here to introduce our company. So uh, I'm Davin, I'm the business development director here. And uh, just a little bit of background, if you haven't heard of Glue already, uh, Glue's been around for 13 years. Uh, we are an open source identity access management company and uh, we seek and source the very best development uh, talent out there to help us advance our code to create the best IAM platform in the world. Uh, we have about 35 contributors, uh, active um, on, on staff around the world. Um, and we currently service over 50 enterprise and government, healthcare and military uh, clients. We have over 3000 deployments a year. People download Glue and use it for um, experimenting with as well as uh, developing on as well as putting into production. And we service all of those through over 20 global services partners um, that we also call friends around the world. So I'm very happy to have uh, VersaSec with us today. Um, VersaSec and uh, Glue have been working together on this exciting uh, application that uh, John will be presenting for us today. Thanks, Devin, and thanks, Via. Um, so as uh, VersaSec is an IT security software company, which was founded in Stockholm, Sweden in 2007. And our mission from the start has always been to help organizations manage their digital identities. And we do this by delivering a system for uh, managing two-factor authentication devices that enable really our customers to increase their security level by using the strong authentication methods. Um, Versa continues to develop and sell our identity and access management uh, systems to enterprise and government organizations around the globe. Uh, since then, we've steadily expanded our global presence, of course, starting off in Sweden, adding offices in Europe, the US, Asia Pacific, and the Middle East. Our application, which is known as VSEC CMS, really empowers businesses to protect their own systems by really providing the state-of-the-art and highly secure identity management. <clears throat> this ensures the device is properly set up for a user. It's maintained throughout, life, uh, throughout its life cycle. It's correctly deactivated when appropriate. And all the other systems that are connected to it are informed of their current state and any status changes. And the effects really of combining these uh, two-factor authentication devices with, with the uh, uh, PKI or FIDO technologies really enable the uses to those consuming applications which demand the highest level of security. And not only for fine-grained access, but also for traceability, audit, and non-repudiation. <clears throat> Further, uh, creating this user-based segmentation uh, also promotes the zero trust principle, which VSEC CMS application allows for by providing integration to these components. And I thank you for having us uh, today to, uh, on this webinar uh, together with uh, the glue. Fantastic. Thanks, John. Yes, so uh, we wanted to provide a little bit of background on what FIDO is, and John will go in and talk a little bit about what PKI, uh, certificate-based access are, but to, just to remind everybody on the call, um, FIDO is an alliance and it's authentication standard. Uh, it was a group of companies that originally started about uh, 10 years ago um, to develop a standard to be phishing resistant for web-based browser-based authentication um, starting first with uh, universal two-factor, it advanced to the FIDO, Fast Identity Online Standard. And now we, uh, a new uh, FIDO2 standard has come out, which combines uh, W3C standards as well as um, standards coming from ma major manufacturers like Apple, Microsoft, and Google. So uh, essentially FIDO allows you to take a token um, today, these are often in YubiKey or uh, Fitian Key or other branded uh, USB keys um, and present those to your computer, uh, either press a button or present the, uh, the key and allow you to, to log in. So they're widely supported uh, throughout our industry. And uh, there are a lot of um, applications for FIDO-based authentication. Its goal is really to be uh, again, as phishing resistant and to reduce our reliance 
on passwords. And uh, we're now seeing new adoption of FIDO in IoT or non-human based uh, authentication as well. John, any comments on this? Absolutely, thank you. Um, well, I'll jump at the uh, PKI. So <clears throat> PKI is the abbreviation for the public key infrastructure and the classic definition that's heard there is really, it enables the security and private exchange of the data through the use of a public and private cryptographic key pair. Uh, this pair is then obtained and shared through a trusted certificate authority. And PKI has been widely deployed and used uh, to authenticate identity, uh, of course, uh, provide access management, encrypt documents and data, encrypt end-to-end uh, -end communication over insecure networks. Um, uh, again, it relies on the services of a trusted certificate authority to create, distribute, and manage the lifecycle of these cryptographic keys through the digital certificates. Um, it's, it's, it's very well established and it's been around for a very long time. Uh, uh, it benefits businesses in many ways. It allows businesses to authenticate users, machines, and those interactions. So you can think of it really as um, the PKI as the helping hand and the facilitator. The helping hand is there for anything and everything, and it's there no matter what it, it's asked of it to do. Uh, so these benefits, along with the need to secure access to cloud-based instances and uh, IoT devices that uh, Davin mentioned have expanded the use of the digital certificates and but have also made managing PKI structures a complex process at times. Um, if, if we go to FIDO is a, a decentralized authentication technology where the trust is established individually between a system or relying party and a user. Um, and in contrast, uh, uh, the PKI serves as a central trust provider to the organization. It really puts the organization into the position to broker the trust between the users and the system. So you really wanna automate the, the, the PKI and remove the complexity from the technology. And this really positions it as a perfect complement to uh, FIDO2. Um, and I think utilizing both these technologies, uh, you assure there's no gaps left in the security perimeter. Um, mobile and cloud-based authentication, which made simple for users with FIDO2, and those devices and emails and document interactions are verified with PKI. Exactly, I think John uh, raises some good points. We thought it was important to perhaps uh, list some of the uh, use cases where you might use FIDO and where you might use PKI. So essentially as a rule of thumb, you should have at least the same assurance level as the technology you're enabling or protecting. So if you're digitally signing a document or encrypting a message, um, perhaps you wanna rely on certificate-based uh, uh, authorization to be able to do that or to step up to certificate-based uh, authentication. So a typical use case would be to log into the application using your FIDO2 key. Um, and then when asked to digitally sign a message, you would use your certificate uh, to do that. So um, again, for email uh, encryption and signing, uh, perhaps FIDO would not be sufficient uh, for TLS or for VPN uh, access, especially in controlled computing environments, perhaps FIDO would not be sufficient for that. Um, and certainly for disk encryption and de-encryption, um, I would suggest that FIDO2 may not be. Again, FIDO is meant to be a user-friendly solution that allows multi-factor authentication. And although it's inherently secure, um, you know, does not provide that extra level of assurity that certificate-based authentication can. And especially for in federal computing environments where you need to meet AAL level three or federal assurance level three, um, based authentication, you would want to rely on a certificate uh, based authority. Any comments on that, John? Yeah, uh, thanks for that comparison. Um, absolutely. I mean, there have been um, a significant increase in the phishing attacks in the last year, uh, where hackers frequently impersonate the coworker and target them to share the private information via email. So, um, as you mentioned, that this can be prevented with the secure email interaction, such as the email sign, signing encryption, uh, which is not part of the FIDO2 specification. Um, as our interactions become increasingly digital, 
um, uh, those documents in person uh, are slowly diminishing, if not gone already. Right. So digitally signing documents has been essential, but uh, also can't be done with FIDO. And you have the PKI offers that well-established, of course, method for securing the communication between the person and uh, or between machines. Um, I mean, there's no reason to choose between PKI and FIDO. I see, I see them as when you combine the best of both worlds to optimally secure your systems there. Fantastic. And I think uh, we have a bit of a demo today. So uh, I'll have John uh, guide us through this. And if you just allow me a couple of seconds to um, uh, set this up for us. Try that again, apologize. And I'll back you up, John. There we go. Okay, thank you. Uh, so here we're going to be issuing a certificate and registering a FIDO credential. Uh, we'll do uh, a pin unblock through our self-service application where they set the pin on the card. Uh, on the token or credential, it can be any type of credential there. Demonstrating uh, Windows, the classic Windows logon using certificate-based authentication. Um, then we go into FIDO authentication with Salesforce through the Glue IDP. And then we'll do a little showcase on uh, digital document signing as well. Okay. So this is the central application here. You. Uh, uh, a typical administrator would issue uh, the credential. You type in your uh, two-factor uh, PIN or passcode uh, to to perform the uh, yeah, and then you'd pick up your user. You'd issue the token. This is where we register. Uh, and this part here, you're registering the FIDO credential for the user into the Glue IDP. So when the user receives his card, it's already registered and ready to be used. And the next slide will show our self-service application. This, you do a pin unblock typically, which means you set pin initial uh, uh, allows the user to set in on the token. We're using here um, a secondary authentication method using the Active Directory to verify uh, that the user is who they say they are. This is the classic Windows logon using, using the certificate that's already issued to the um, credential. So they can now use it to log into their workstations here. This is simulating a local domain and then authenticate Salesforce using the Glue IDP. Again, we registered previously uh, the, the user um, and uh, uh, published the, the, the public key into the user object into the IDP. And then this through, through the uh, Glue IDP through CASA, you're able to do single sign-on to Salesforce. So here, uh, you would sign your document with a digital signature based on the, the uh, certificate that's issued on the credential. And then of course, according to the uh, protocols of the your public key infrastructure here, PKI. So all these use cases can be managed and deployed under unified uh, application in v6 CMS application, connecting to your existing PKI, connecting to your FIDO IDP, um, applying different policies and things according to your requirements right on the credential for the user. And that's our demo. Excellent. Great. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, now that we've reached the end of the presentation portion, uh, we have a few questions for John and Davin to uh, start the panel discussion. Um, John, we'll start with you. What smart cards tokens support both FIDO and PKI authentication? 
Okay, thank you for that question. Uh, so there are many out there. Um, I'll speak about the ones that we support within V6 CMS currently and what we've tested. Uh, so if you look at the whole YubiKey 5 series, there's many different uh, uh, forms there. There's the nano version, there's the USB version and USB-C, so we support all those. Uh, the Talis 3940 uh, dual model and the K9 FETIAN EPAS uh, uh, credential as well, we also, we also support. And uh, if you have something, that you'd like us to support or, or uh, we'd, we'd be happy to evaluate it with you as well. So okay. reach out to me. Great. Uh, Davin, this one, uh, which authentication challenges does FIDO2 address? Yeah, good question. So uh, we're seeing an actually expansion of FIDO2 um, into consumer-based authentication where through loyalty programs, um, you know, specific users can be issued little fobs or, uh, you know, tiny, um, key rings that can be used as FIDO devices. But typically, uh, FIDO2 and FIDO have been used for workforce authentication. So, uh, even a distributed workforce or an on premise workforce. Now we're seeing, of course, a more remote based workforce. Individuals are issued these uh, USB keys and cards, and they are used for uh, terminal or access to uh, the websites, as well as. Um, uh, authentication directly onto the machines. So it's that extra level of assurity. Um, it provides uh, multi-factor authentication and of course helps uh, organizations move towards more passwordless authentication. Uh, Microsoft and Apple and Google, uh, the big three, uh, as well as uh, Azure and, um, and AWS and their cloud services um, are all supporting FIDO-based authentication. Okay. And how would you enable FIDO authentication within single sign-on? All right. So, um, so today, uh, Azure AD, if you're using Office 365, is a form of single sign-on, although not all um, applications or web-based applications work freely with, with Azure. But uh, in a typical office environment, um, if you're using O365 or that type of a collaboration toolkit, um, including Google uh, G Suite, uh, it natively supports uh, FIDO2 for authentication. However, if you do need to uh, add um, FIDO to um, web-based or SaaS-based applications, you would need a centralized uh, FIDO2 server. So obviously the Glue server provides a, a very advanced uh, implementation of that, and you would uh, consolidate your authentication uh, with something like Glue um, to front end all of that, including Office 365 and uh, enable the FIDO2 service and, and register your devices uh, through a solution like the VSEC CMS. Great, thanks. And John, what is the driver behind issuing and managing FIDO2 and PKI? That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> so I think organizations want to use the appropriate security, but with a good balance as well between that security and usability. And I think uh, one of the primary driving factors still to today is weak or compromised passwords um, as their primary cause of data breaches and removing this threat is a top priority. Um, organizations also, I think, want to move away from using passwords altogether and also OTPs. Uh, so PKI and FIDO both offer crypto-based authentication, which is uh, the most secure method of a multi-factor authentication available today. Um, and internally, an organization may wish to use PKI where many systems already have built-in PKI support or, or where uh, the use cases can lend themselves to a PKI-based solution, um, such as uh, the document signing, encrypted email. Uh, but some applications that do not lend themselves easily uh, I think I haven't mentioned um, some legacy to PKI based authentication um, that are difficult and SaaS solutions where the company is not always in control uh, of the end application. Um, PKI is also heavily policy driven with certificates being issued by a trusted, trusted authority. Uh, it's often difficult to extend these processes to maybe contractors or the supply chain where the organization, again, not in control totally of the 
or, or at all of the onboarding processes. So in these areas, FIDO can be a good um, alternative. Great, thank you. Well, that ends the uh, uh, panelist discussion and we are now open for questions and answers. Um, you may add them to the Q&A section or the chat section. Um, meanwhile, we have a few that came in earlier for people that could not join. So I'll start with that while we wait to see if anyone else has questions. Um, let's see, uh, I have FIDO only YubiKeys right now. Would I need to replace them? John? Sure. Um, so if you're using VSEC CMS in the very near future, you won't need to replace them because we will be able to manage FIDO only tokens. So if you want to use FIDO only and, and, and manage those credentials, you would be able to. Okay. And for FIDO2, uh, do you need to, do they need to replace existing infrastructures uh, to add the PKI capabilities? Uh, they would need to enable uh, uh, the PKI infrastructure, yes, in order to add the, the, the authentication side. So for CMS, they, do, they would be able to manage those credentials, but you would need an existing certificate authority to connect to um, and then um, for authentications to happen in the back end. So, so they would need an existing uh, PKI infrastructure there, yes. Okay, so that rolls into the next question. What is the VSEC CMS role in the FIDO2 and PKI solutions? So, so the CMS really enables the management of the authentication of the device throughout the whole life cycle. Basically, we ensure the device is properly set up for each use. We maintain the device properly throughout its life cycle. Uh, we, it's correctly deactivated when it's needed. And then the, the systems that are connected to it, like your certificate authorities, IDP, et cetera, are all always informed about the current state of the device and any status changes. Okay, great. And uh, where can someone learn more about this VSEC CMS solution? You can go to our website, versec.com, um, contact us uh, directly. Uh, you can also register uh, through our website and uh, download our software and start installing it. We have great guides in there um, on how to use it, how to guides, how to set it up. If you have an existing Microsoft CA environment, it literally takes minutes to set up and start managing your credentials. Um, uh, yeah, or you can contact us and then and, and we can, can work with you if you have something more specific. Okay, and Devin, uh, FIDO2, the consumer-centric solution, how does FIDO2 work in enterprise? Yeah, I think we addressed that earlier. You know, very definitely FIDO2 is a enterprise-grade uh, multi-factor authentication solution. In fact, it's based on standards. So uh, if uh, you were to decide on an MFA solution, I would guide you to using FIDO2 for, uh, for an MFA. Um, but certainly we're seeing now uh, the PC manufacturers, so Mac, uh, certainly the Apple devices are now um, actually FIDO2 devices. They have and are storing um, the private keys within them, uh, hardware-based authentication so that when you touch uh, the Touch ID or when you uh, use your face uh, to log in through, um, through Microsoft Face ID, um, you know, that is using the FIDO base or can use the FIDO base authentication. So, um, so we're seeing now a cross pollination. And I think more and more industries cross consumer and cross uh, enterprise are recognizing the need for multi factor. Uh, certainly, many industries are mandated today in order to provide multi factor authentication uh, just for security reasons, especially in banking and insurance. And we're seeing more and more of that trickle down to consumer authentication where you might use MFA just to uh, log in and buy your, 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 your groceries off of, uh, off of Amazon. Um, what we're trying to do here through FIDO is to reduce phishing and reduce our reliance on passwords. Okay, yeah. great. Well, I do not see any more open questions. So I want to thank John and Davin and our audience. Um, this is uh, the end of the webinar, and we want to thank you for joining us. We will send a follow-up email with a link to the recording and links to VersaSec and Glue, including Davin and John's email addresses. If you have further questions or interest in VersaSec, uh, VSEC CMS integration solution with Glucasa. 
thank you again for attending. We appreciate your time and interest in Bruin versus SEC. Thank you. Thank you.